阿罗汉果位，或者是菩萨的果位，那这样的话，到时。Many practitioners, of course, they truly believe in the cause and uh, uh, effect, and they would think to themselves, "I will not create negative karma; otherwise, the creation could be very horrible." And uh, this kind of uh, negative karma that I create may even uh, mature even when I attain the fruition for arhahood, bodhisattva hood, and so on, such as when Master Xuanzang got ill, someone appeared in front of him saying that now the fruition of your previous karma has matured. So we can see even the great masters like Xuanzang would also experience the suffering of uh, previous uh, negative karma. Uh, we should contemplate in such a way. As it is stated in even the Diamond Sutra, where it says that all the suffering that I should have uh, endured when I reborn into the realm of hungry ghost and hell realm, uh, if I experience them in this lifetime, it would be rather. Uh, much lighter than I should have received, uh, such as headache and so on. With such kind of suffering, if you experience it in this lifetime, you will, you may avoid it and in uh, reborn in hell realm. And that is much better. So for some Buddhists, uh, after. After they took refuge and become a Buddhist, um, right away they don't get uh, they their body is not as healthy anymore and so on. It you can uh, uh, contemplate in such a way. So um, the benefit of the suffering is that it could help you to take refuge in the three jewels. It could help you to uh, eradicate your arrogance, and it could help you to, and it gives you a chance to confess your previous negative karma. Uh, there are people who would, there are people who would. Uh, um, there are people when they're healthy, they don't really confess. But once they get ill, they would then right away uh, go release life and do lots of uh, lots of positive deeds. And they would say that I used to eat lots of seafood, but now I don't anymore. So things like such, I think it really shows that. Uh, it really shows that it is a great way of uh, uh, creating opportunities for you to confess your previous karma. Uh, this year, I think, because of the var uh, the pandemic, in some ways, I think many people truly felt that because we killed so many ascension beings before, we should really confess. Well, of course, I think. Uh, without having to make this point very clearly, we uh, would feel that this pandemic has uh, something related to human beings ourselves. So this suffering, of course, it would be really wonderful to um, confess and. Uh, uh, and uh, from this aspect, I think it is very meaningful. Uh, the fifth aspect is using suffering to find joy in positive actions. Um, there are people who probably didn't have uh, faith. They said that, well, I'm I'm suffering quite a bit. Could you ask the the sangha to release life for me? Could you ask sangha to chant mantra for me? I would ask why. They said, well, just many problems happened. When people encounter problems, they would want to practice virtuous deeds. I think many people have that kind of uh, mind, uh, that kind of mindset. 
Uh, for example, many relatives of our Sangha over here who are non non believers, uh, they don't believe all the mantras and all the pendants and so on. But during pandemic, they would ask around and say, "Do you have a so and so mantra and the pendant? Can I keep it at my home because I think it would be helpful?" And I think this pandemic definitely brought. Uh, lots of people um, stronger or closer to having a faith. Therefore, suffering brought something beneficial to them. Uh, suffering brought them faith. This is quite wonderful. Uh, and then, uh, say to yourself, if I really want to find happiness, which is the opposite of suffering, then I have to make an, an effort to practice uh, its cause that is positive action we should then try our best to in, to practice the cause of <coughs> The direct cause of happiness is virtuous deeds, and the direct cause of suffering is uh, non virtuous deeds. So, in order to attain happiness, then you have to practice virtuous deeds. And in such a way, it slowly will let you. Uh, depart of the sufferings, and at the same time, the virtuous deeds and happiness will grow naturally. Or when you're suffering, uh, your faith towards virtuous deeds will continuously to grow. So, but whenever we're happy. Whenever we're happy, maybe we practice very diligently. But whenever there is suffering, um, people could give up their faith and practice, and that would be very, uh, that would be very, uh, that would be a wrong way of looking at it. I really like this teaching from Avatamsaka Sutra, where it says that even if there's a even if there is a hot plate of iron that is uh, circling on top of my head, I am not going to view it as uh, I'm, with that kind of suffering, I am not going to give up uh, my bodhicitta. I remember uh, Master Meng Tan, uh, who is a famous uh, Zen master in China, he uh, encouraged himself with that verse when he was imprisoned. Even if you suffer from a hot plate, hot iron plate that is uh, whirling on top of your head, which is really hot and very difficult to endure, S under such circumstances, you will not give up your uh, your awakened heart, your bodhicitta. We should have such firm faith. Whatever suffering you are facing, sh you should not give up on the willingness to practice virtuous deeds. This is extremely important. But we ourselves uh, tend to do rather the, the exact opposite. Whenever there is a tiny bit of problem that happens to us externally, and then you would say, no, I can't do this anymore. And right away, you feel scared, and some of them would even get derobed. So, 
without deep faith, whatever little changes that happens outside would waver your inner faith, will waver your belief. Therefore, it is only through problem, uh, through obstacles and turbulence, you will know if a person have a genuine deep faith or not. In fact, after encountering uh, difficulties, there are people who would practice more diligently on virtuous deeds. It is said uh, that when people are sitting on the saddle, the body should be light. And when a person is facing critical moment, the mind should be uh, quite stable. It means that you can only see a person's true character through difficulties. Uh, it is said a friend in need is a friend indeed. So in such a way, you can really see a person's genuine practice. Some people, after encountering a little bit of uh, difficulty, uh, difficulties, and then right away they give up their faith. And there are people who, who would face um, who would face great torment and not giving up on their faith. Just like the more you tempering the gold, the purer the gold. I think it really applies to our faith and practice. I understand that there are people who cannot go through difficulties. Um, but look at the great masters from the past. Master Meng Tan, in his later years, after in his later years, um, he was imprisoned for 33 years. And there are people who asked him, have you ever thought about committing a, a suicide? He said, yes, I did. But because my name is Meng Tsai, Meng Tsai means contemplating in dream. Uh, so he told lots of dreams. So he said that in his dream, he dreamt that he had he will have opportunities to give the Dharma teachings to people after he got released from prison. Therefore, that really kept him to persist all the way through. With this kind of genuine wish, he uh, then stabled his mind and did not commit suicide. Do we have people here who ever committed suicide? Well, maybe, maybe not. How about Kempos and Kemos? Maybe as well as, maybe as well. Um, uh, do we then meditate in the dreams? I, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but anyhow, in whichever way, even if you don't dream, uh, dream with meditation, I think it's the best not to choose such an extreme way of ending your life. Sometimes those are just du dualistic thoughts, and this kind of deluded thoughts are not reliable at all. If the Dharma masters and uh, composer Kemmels had uh, such a thoughts of, uh, get, uh, of uh, suicide, committing suicide, I think lots of people must have many more of those. Anyhow, I think we should uh, we should supplicate to the three jewels so that we can control our mind. Anyhow, the the genuine I the general idea is the only way of increasing your virtuous uh, fruition is to have virtuous uh, aspiration at all times. According to treatise on the response of Tao, it stated that if uh, our mind is constant uh, accompanied with uh, kind thoughts, then the 
Uh, spir the good spirits will follow you if otherwise then the evil spirits will follow you so instead of uh, thinking about how other peoples are not treating you well i think we should be really kind uh, because in such a way the things will go uh, eventually more uh, uh, smoothly 